Here we go, back into the darkness. We go. He even looks different. <laughs> you just got caught. How embarrassing. When your evil inner monologue gets overheard. Yes. Indeed, what are you fighting? That's one great thing about Hanji. She can look right at it. Her curiosity just takes over. <laughs> oh man, feels like so long ago. Aaron was so generous in giving of his time to Hanji. Oh. Oh? What? Was I right to be concerned? I mean, this is Attack on Titan, so yes, I was. So there's a lot of controversy about Eren, and I, I think I mostly expressed my thoughts last episode. One thing I want to make clear is I don't find him unsympathetic. The things he's been through, no one should ever have to go through. In a way, the biggest tragedy is him having all this power, which is not his choice. That being said, one idea I want to kind of push back on is the idea that, like, he's become just this, like, calm and calculating individual. That he has let go of his hatred, he's let go of his anger and his vengeance, and he's now just thinking about survival and, like, the best path to survival. And while I definitely don't have the full picture on Eren yet, because this is Attack on Titan, and you never have the full picture until after the fact, my feeling is that he's still operating from a deeply emotional place, and is actually not thinking totally clearly, even if he's presenting his ideas as logical. Now, you gotta be really careful, because having emotion about something does not mean you're not thinking clearly. But I guess for me, a big and important question outside the show is like which of those is leading and i think more often than we like to admit or more often than we realize actually we have the emotion first and then we construct the ideas around those emotions. And this can be a terribly insidious thing because you can lead yourself down all sorts of roads that on the surface seem perfectly reasonable, but actually are motivated by things like hatred, vengeance, bitterness towards others, things like that. In fact, I think the emotions we have, the feelings we have about certain things, predispose us to accepting ideas that fit in with what we already want to do anyway. To add to my very controversial views on Aaron, one thing I commonly see stated is that while well, he waited until Willie Tiber declared war, it's very possible that he would not have done what he did if that hadn't happened. However, my, my instinct about it is that there's at least a solid chance that he would have done what he did no matter what Willie Tiber said in that speech. Along those lines, I think viewers of the show will easily accept Eren's viewpoint when they're already on Eren's side because they have an emotional attachment to Eren or the Scouts or against the Marlians or whatever. An example of this is like, either you do what Aaron did or you're, you're wiped out, which to me is a complete oversimplification because there are also defensive tactics that you can take. And then you get into an argument of like, well, that wouldn't work. But none of us really know that, right? None of us really know how it would play out. But it's easy to get attached to that binary choice of like, wipe out the Marlians preemptively or get destroyed to justify a pre-existing feeling of being behind Aaron. You know what I'm saying? Which is not to say they wouldn't get wiped out. It's just to say that it's not that clear. It's not that strong of a reasoning for supporting all the wrongdoing that Aaron has done. Whatever the case may be, perhaps Aaron's biggest problem is not necessarily his hatred or desire for vengeance, but the fact that he considers himself to be an adequate judge of what should befall the fate of humanity, if that makes sense, which is sort of too large of a burden for anybody. And, and again, in that sense, he is both a perpetrator of wrongdoing and also a victim. You know what I mean? It's very complicated. A sound argument. Oh, really? <laughs> Let's hear it. Speaking of logic, two years ago. Is this the episode where all my theories get turned on their head again? <laughs> I love all the different aesthetics. They're giving me like avatar levels of hair changes here. Oh, they have an ally. Oh, it's her! Ah, and she was there during the theater event, enjoying the... or not enjoying the play. I'm a relative. I bet this lady could crush it in some ODM gear. <laughs> That was your ancestor. All right, I'm I'm shaky on the lore. Like it's not my strong suit, obviously. But the Oriental Clan, as they're called, is immune to the Founding Titans' powers, right? It hasn't come up for a while, so I haven't really thought about it. But I guess like looking at it again with the things that we know now, that's because they're not aliens and because they don't have Titan. Potential. At any rate, this explains like Mikasa and Levi and Kenny being on the island. Wow, Mikasa just like got royal status. Levi too, no? I love how Pixis continues to play an important role. 
その印なんでエレンだけに見せたの嬉しいんだよ私たちは生まれないので重い荷物を背負う者同士なんでしょ Chosen ones in a way, royal lineage and all that. There's a weird thing brewing between Eren, Historia, and Mikasa. Mikasa was previously jealous of Eren and Historia's relationship, and Eren and Historia have gone through a lot together. I mean, speaking of basements, the Rob Rice basement was quite the day in their lives. But my growing feeling is that Eren and Historia will rift, and Mikasa and Eren also framed as having potential tension. So does that mean Mikasa and Historia? There was something to that scene that wasn't just random. Though Eren was looking on lovingly. <laughs> ミカサ様への取り次ぎを条件にある鳥派からに賛同しましたことを。How いまだパラディ島以外では採掘されたことがない。ロードレイスベースメント。この近代化の時代において、金銀財宝に等しい資源が眠っておられるのです。私は必ず使われただけでは。儲けばなしもなしにこの島に来る危険は犯せんという。
you think are right. Or maybe more clear, try to never do something you feel is wrong. That is legit heroic, even if it exists on a very, very small and local life scale for most people. Try not cutting corners, you know, try not trying to get things out of other people. Try not shortchanging yourself, you know what I mean? Try doing the things you feel are best for you to do that day or today or whatever without shrinking into like fear or laziness or apathy or something like that. Imagine seeing something you think is wrong that everyone believes and having the courage to say that. It's incredibly difficult to live that way, especially when you consider not just like this moment, but like life, you know, living that way perpetually, that's a huge burden to carry. It's perfectly sympathetic why we don't do that. But I feel like there is some kind of freedom to be found in accepting that momentous challenge and answering to yourself in that way. There's something about that for me that is taking power back from the world. And it's something like freedom. <laughs> Oh, she's doing it. Wow. What do I feel like there's more, more to this? Isn't this the plan? Just to have a lot of kids? You're endangering yourself, Rogue. <laughs> What's in the bottle? この暑い中ご苦労様だよ。いや、俺たちはこのバカの護衛で仕方なく。お前ら、ずうたいばかり高くなる。They really are. I'm loving all these physical changes. ヒズルはパラディ島の資源を独占取引したんだから。Yeah, they were clearly self-interested from the beginning. 世界はパラディ島が災いの種であり続けることを望んでいる。Interesting. It's like pragmatic scapegoating. こちらの糸も測らず、勝手に悪魔だって決めつけて。it's easy when you're so far away and across the sea. Yep. Haji's <laughs> so, so great in these episodes. At least she's thinking. I guess these were the good days when they felt like they could actually do some good. <laughs> Using this chance as a subtle way to take a shot at Eren. I feel like he's he's grown a lot, but he's still a little bit unproven. Yeah, leader seems to be his destiny. I trust Connie with this, actually. <laughs> Idiot like a fox. You got the wrong idea of what intelligence is. No, you won't. I'm sorry. But imagine all the eating you could do. <laughs> Careful. Careful. Whoops. There it is. It's all out in the open now. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of being twins, to me, Connie and Sasha are some of the most intelligent characters. It really depends on what you mean by intelligence. And some people mean intelligence to specifically mean like IQ. But the older I get, the more I think that maybe a more important measure is just like how well you live, you know, and how harmonious you are overall. Like I know so many people who are incredibly book smart and just great deep thinkers who exist in a state of just perpetual despair. And it's like, how smart can you really be if you're always miserable? Connie and Sasha have proven themselves to be, in many ways, some of the most adept at navigating this crazy world. Connie especially, like, all I feel from him is just love for everyone. <laughs> His negative traits are so well compartmentalized and contained that they don't destroy him. He has this intense fear before and during battles that fades away after the battle. He has this intense sadness when bad things happen, but is still able to love others. You know, like, I don't know. I just love Connie. That's the bottom line. <laughs> Connie for founding Titan. Cast your votes, everyone. <laughs> Very nice to say. Right, nice cover. Nice cover up for the emotions. I wonder if she'll be wearing that scarf until the end. Secrets and lies. Navigating the world. Navigating the world. 
あるならどうするの俺たちは奴を切る覚悟をしておく必要があるそんなことさせないそんなことにはならないと思う Meaning, I don't want it to come to that. She does think it will come to that. She said so in her OVA. So it's not a good t h I love how the Eren character controversy extends to the characters themselves. I love how the Eren character controversy extends to the characters themselves. I love how the Eren character controversy Sasha got seen that the Eren was doing that. I'm sorry, I got that. Speaking of having the emotion first and then creating the logical structure around that emotion, I feel like Mikasa already agrees with them. It's just that she can't really look at it yet. To Eren's credit in this scene, I personally think that some of his methods in Marley were wrong. I can't blame him for Sasha's death. I mean, it is a direct link, it is a consequence, but you sort of have to make a distinction between an actual choice someone makes knowingly and then like ripple effects of that choice. The farther out the ripple goes, The harder it is for me to blame someone for it. So, like, yeah, he created a war with Marley. It is definitely true that Sasha died as a result of his actions, but it's it's not the same thing as saying Aaron killed Sasha. You know what I mean? It's subtle, but it's important. Just like how my Lord and Savior Erwin Smith is often criticized for endangering people at Stoes, but for me, because his plan was to take Annie peacefully, he's not as culpable for civilians dying as Aaron is for directly smashing a building. I also think, in Aaron's defense, that his laughing is not necessarily a sign of his evil or not caring. It seems to me like he's just sort of. Breaking under all the things that are happening and under just the weird mental framework he's built in terms of what he's doing, forcing himself to do things that probably to him actually feel terrible and trying really hard to keep a lid on that and just say, it's for the best, it's for the best, you know? I don't think it's that he really doesn't care about them or Sasha. I just think that his inner state is so non harmonious that it's coming out in weird ways. <laughs> That's a good idea. Find out as much as you can. Find out as much as you can and do the best you can for now. Eating Eren. What you up to, Zeke? I'm on to you. You think I'm not, but I am. <laughs> I saw you killed those scouts with glee. Never forget. Never forgive. <laughs> I can't tell you how much of a relief it is for me to see the scouts struggling with this. I'm so happy, like, from where the Marleyan War started and seeing the scouts sort of arrive and what I thought was support of Eren, to now seeing them grapple with this stuff, it's very satisfying. Like, it's a very difficult problem. There are no great paths forward or clear answers, at least to me, and I think to the characters as well. And so, to that end, so far, I think they're dealing with it correctly. It's like, you can't plan out or map a perfect path. Going back to Erwin and Levi's philosophy, you can only treat the moment. As the thing you're dealing with, and you try to think as far past the individual choices as you can, but there's such a severe limit to how far that goes because even two steps out, there's infinite complexity. So you make the decision to just accept the unknown and do the right things, do what feels right, and not let yourself get tempted into doing something that feels terrible. And is clearly wrong on some level in the hopes of some consequences. Because who the hell knows? Like, who the hell knows where this goes? Maybe Aaron does actually, but he's sort of a weird exception to normal laws since he can see the future. In situations like this, it's inevitable that they're gonna make mistakes. They're gonna do terrible things because it's it's a war and there's just so much at stake. Nevertheless, it makes me happy to see that they haven't capitulated. You know, they're still trying to figure this out. They're working towards it. They are cautious of doing things that are wrong. And they do that despite the fact that this world is horrible and cruel. And therefore, they make it so that the world is not just terrible and cruel. And to me, that's sort of the thing, you know, like, yeah, there is a lot of cruelty. There are a lot of terrible things that happen. People can be terrible to each other. We're all basically trying to navigate that imperfectly. But, you know, I think that the few good things that do exist exist largely because people make a choice to not do those things through what is, I believe, to be some actually intrinsic goodness in humans and also just pragmatism of wanting to survive and wanting to, like, live in a society where we're not always in peril. People are able, even in small, limited ways, but sufficient ways, to not totally succumb to their. Worst desires. And it's because of that that we have anything good at all. So, this idea that, you know, there is only cruelty and just do whatever it takes to survive, etc., it just misses it misses a big part of humanity, which is like the greatness of it, the heroic element of it, which is the resistance of that whole thing, creating a space for oneself and others that is at least one tiny little beacon of hope. And I think that works so much better as a strategy, you know, as, a, as an outlook for life. The extreme end of that, where you just give in, is like, it's, there's nothing to that. It's easy. And holding that view in some ways ensures that view and ensures that state of living. So, although this was a dark episode in its way, I feel very happy to watch the characters even just struggle with it. It's good. It's inspiring. Now, I prepare for next episode when that optimism is definitely smashed. 